Hey book dragons, welcome back to my channel. It is time for a book review blast. So I got to thinking that it's been a while since I've done a book review. And I've got several books that I finished recently that I would like to do a book review for, but you know, there's not always enough time in the month to, to do a book review for each and every book. And some of these books are continuations of series. So I thought, why not figure out a way just to kind of do summary reviews of these books. And I saw a really great way of doing it on another booktuber's channel. Her name is Nikki Hawks the obsessive bookseller and she has a booktube channel and she did something called the book review blitz and I thought wow that's a really cool way of doing book reviews and kind of catching up on some of the book reviews that you have needed to get done so I decided to go ahead and do that with this one but I didn't want to totally just steal the the name of her video that she did. So I'm calling mine a book review blast. I know it's not much of a change, but there it is. And uh, I warned her ahead of time that I might steal her idea. So Nikki, if you're watching, I hope you enjoy this video. And to you viewers out there, I hope you enjoy it as well. And so let's get right to it. My recent reads, starting with The Sandman. I recently finished the Sandman graphic novel series, which uh, I will be doing a video for that coming in the next few weeks. But that's not what this is. The one I'm talking about is the Sandman on Audible. These are full cast productions of the graphic novels in audio format. You've got a bunch of different people voicing all the roles. Neil Gaiman himself illustrates it. It's fantastic. And so the first volume of Sandman on Audible covered the first three graphic novels. Uh, this one, I believe it covered up through volumes four and five of the graphic novel series. And it's just a fantastic production. If you have read The Sandman and you know how magnificent it is already, the Audible production is just as good and sometimes even better because you're, you're, you're getting that, that audio soundtrack. You're, you're getting the, the voices that embody your different characters and oh man it is so so well done and what I like about the audio is it does a really good job of taking something that is very visual and laying it out in audio format meaning that they, they basically fill in the things that you would normally just see on the page and they explain them to you so you know, Neil Gaiman will tell you what is happening in the scene, what certain characters look like, uh, some, something that you would be able to see for yourself if you were reading the graphic novel. But since you're not, that kind of has to be fed to you, so to speak. And it, it's just done masterfully. I absolutely loved it. Uh, if you are someone who prefers to do audiobooks, this is a great way to experience the Sandman for yourself, uh, especially with the Sandman TV series coming to Netflix in the next few months. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but it is coming. I highly recommend that you get a little bit of a background for yourself on who the Sandman is and what the story is about and what it's like uh, before you see the show. So if you are averse to reading graphic novels, the Audible production is a fantastic way to experience Sandman for yourself. So I highly, highly recommend it. Now the next book I read, it's actually two books, 
uh, but I counted it as one because they're they're part of a series and and they're novellas, so they're really short. So it feels like I just read one longer book by reading two of them. It's a series of six novellas, I believe. Uh, it's the Murderbot series by Martha Wells. I read All Systems Red and Artificial Condition. So All Systems Red follows a secubot or a security bot rather is what, what it essentially means, who has been hired by a particular company to do security for a job they are working on. And unbeknownst to the team that hired it, the security bot has fried its master control system. So, you know, there's a backup system where if the security bot starts getting out of hand, uh, there's certain things that it can't do because it's been restricted by the company that created it. And so the, the security bot has fried its master control system and is keeping that on the hush-hush though because it doesn't want the the team that it's on to be scared of it and then all of a sudden there's this mystery element that unfolds because they find out about another team that is working in the same area and all of a sudden this other team drops contact they can't get a hold of them so they have to go to this other location and find out what happened to the team and it turns out that they've been invaded by some other security bots who have had their protocols overridden to the point that they can actually kill so it, it's it's pretty interesting and uh and and you get to learn more about the main security bot that we're following and the security bot has given itself the name of Murderbot because at some point in the past they had murdered some people whether prompted by someone else to do that or something was messed up in their system it's not really clear to them but uh, they they didn't want that to, to come to light and they were even afraid of it happening again and so they, they fried their master control system. And it, it's just a really, really interesting tale. So funny at times, uh, really quirky. Some of the things Murderbot says is just completely off the wall. And so Murderbot goes off on, on their own and starts uh, finding other ways to be of help in the world and you know be be productive in the world and that's where artificial condition comes in and the murder bot is hired as a security detail for this particular team of scientists who are embarking on this new discovery that they've made so the murder bot is assigned as a security detail to protect them and and and, and help them retrieve their idea from the company they work for that apparently has stolen their idea. So uh, it, it's just, it, it's kind of confounded in some ways, but it's a lot of fun. I highly enjoyed the Murderbot books and I'm going to continue the series for sure. And the next book I want to talk about is Death Masks. This is book number five in the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher. And I, I'm really, really enjoying seeing Harry grow and develop as a character. He's still the same old Harry from book one in some ways, and in other ways he's drastically changed. And this book finds Harry getting involved in the release of a possible contagion. Uh, it involves the Shroud of Turin, uh, which is a religious artifact, if you're not aware of the uh, supposed burial cloth of Christ, and uh, and there there's a group that is trying to actively secure this so that they can use it to create a biological weapon and, and things like that. It's it is really really interesting, and Harry comes up against a foe that is quite formidable, a foe that he has not encountered anything like up until this point. 
and and it was just so much fun plenty of cheeky and sarcastic humor coming from Harry as well as other characters in the story uh, the the mystery elements are so good there is familiar characters from the previous books uh, that pop up in the series there's a vampire that ends up challenging Harry to a one-on-one -on -one duel in hopes of averting an all-out war it, it's just there are so many stakes that it, it's just unreal uh, this book is easily my favorite Dresden book that I've read so far and I definitely plan to continue the series I've heard it just gets better and better from here and I expect that we're going to see the primary foe from this story in future books. It's just a guess, but it, I, I have a feeling I'm right because uh, it was easily set up for more occurrences of that character. So highly recommend that you read the Dresden series. It just keeps getting better and better. I also read Dead House Gates. This is book number two in the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And I struggled with this one a lot. There were chunks of the book that were really interesting. There were other chunks of the book that really weren't that interesting. And, well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. They, they were interesting, but they were so slow. That, that it just kind of dragged in places. So I had gotten it with Kindle Unlimited and I decided, okay, well, maybe maybe I'll try the audiobook because the audiobook came with the Kindle Unlimited download. So I tried the audiobook. It helped a little bit, but the narrator was just, in my personal opinion, the narrator was really bad for this book. So... I ended up going back to the physical book and I, I just ended up taking longer with it. So uh, it, it picks up right after the events of Gardens of the Moon with some exceptions and that would be the characters. Uh, there are a few characters that carry over from Gardens of the Moon, but most of the characters in the book are brand new. Uh, there's, a, there's almost a whole new cast of characters and, and if you know Malazan, you, you already know what I'm talking about. There's already a ton of characters to keep track of. And now you're introduced to a whole new set. So it, it was cool, though. I, I really enjoyed it overall. Some characters especially were really endearing to me. Uh, there's a lot of really great themes in the book, uh, such as friendship. There was a really, really strong friendship in the book between two particular characters, one character in particular has been assigned to watch the other character and if this particular character gets out of control with his power and his rage, the character that's been assigned to him is supposed to kill him. But through the, through the course of their traveling together, they've developed a really strong bond of friendship and, and he, he just doesn't know if he can do it, despite all the horrific things that the character he's watching can potentially do. So I really enjoyed that part of it. There's a really heavy emphasis on power struggles in this book. There's all, all these different groups vying for power and control and uh, wanting to overthrow the Malazan Empire and... So, so many stakes and so many different directions that this book goes. And I think that also made it kind of hard for me to read. So I enjoyed it, though, and I do want to continue with the Malazan series. So uh, let me know your thoughts on that. If you kind of, if you read the book and you kind of know where I'm coming from on this, uh, I, I would love to have some camaraderie on that because it, it's... It's an interesting series, for sure. Very different from anything I've read. And then the final book I want to talk about on this book review blast is The Song of Susanna. It is book six in the Dark Tower series. Uh, and it's a really short book, really quick read. I, 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 it only took me a few days to read it. I had a blast. There were so many new things I learned 
so many revelations in this book of kind of what was going on behind the scenes and why so many things are the way they are that it just was really enjoyable for me. Now, I will say there are some things I didn't like. Number one, the ending was very abrupt. I mean, it just cuts you off. It, it It's almost as if the Song of Susanna and the Dark Tower were meant to be read together, one right after the other, because you, you're just kind of left hanging at the end of Song of Susanna. So I'm like, I, you know, man, for, for people who read the Dark Tower series as it was released, and they had to wait for the last book, for the Dark Tower to come out after an ending like that, I'm like, well, I, I would be pretty upset if, if I were his readers, but it, it's okay. Uh, and there was some other stuff that was kind of weird. It was one of the most meta books I have ever meant. It, it's a very self-aware book, and I don't want to say too much to spoil it, but let's just say there is a character in the book that knows everything about the Dark Tower world intimately. And we'll leave it at that. And it made for a very meta experience while reading the book. I, I just, I'm leaving it there because you just have to read it for yourself. And I really think you should. The Dark Tower series is fantastic. So that's it. I've, I've done my book review blast. And, and, and it's all I have to say on that. I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this format that I did. Is this something that you might enjoy seeing again sometime? Um, I am going to do regular book reviews most of the time, but every once in a while I might do a quick blast like this just to kind of catch up on some of my reviews and especially for books that are part of a longer series that I don't want to spoil too much about. I might throw them into a, a book review blast like this. So let me know what you thought in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Make sure you are reading more books, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.